Good afternoon, church family. Here we are the week before Christmas. This Saturday, we will celebrate together Christmas Eve with our traditional candle lighting service. And then on Sunday morning, we will come back together at 1045 and celebrate the birth of Christ in a very special way. I'm excited about the fact that this, this year, Christmas actually falls on a Sunday, so we get to come together for that hour and celebrate what God did for us so many years ago in that manger in Bethlehem. Through Advent, we've talked about how Christmas is, it brings us the hope that we have because of what Christ has done for us. We have peace that comes through Christ. We find joy that's immeasurable that can't be found anywhere else outside of Christ. In the fourth week of Advent, we celebrate the theme of love. And out of all of the, the, the themes of Christmas, uh, love is most central to, to what took place in the manger that day. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at 1 John on our, in our Sunday morning worship service, studying through the, that book that John wrote to the early church. And in that book, in chapter four, John gives us this expression of who God is and God's love for us. In chapter four, verse nine, he says, God's love was revealed to us in this way, that God sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God wanted us to know how much he loved us. And, and so he sent us Jesus. That's the message of Bethlehem. That's the message of the manger. It's the message of God's love for you and I. You know, I love Christmas. I love the lights. I love the memories. I love the, the, the food. I love the celebrations. I love the Christmas trees. I love the season. I love the fact that people are talking about Jesus who don't even really know who he is. I love Christmas. And we throw that word love around in a lot of different contexts, a lot of different ways. But there's no greater picture of love than what God showed us when he sent us his son. Imagine the creator of the universe, Christ, the second person of the Trinity, who was there before the world was created, who was there as the world was spoken into existence, who was the agent of creation, according to Colossians, steps out of heaven, submits himself to human flesh and enters the, the womb of a woman to be born in a nasty, stinky stable with cows and sheep and manure and urine and hay all around a dirty place that sends us an, an incredible message that God's love will send him wherever he needs to go to reach you and to reach me. His message first came to the shepherds out on the hillside, not to the kings, not to the priest, not to the preachers, the prophets. His message came to the shepherds. God wanted us to know that he loves each and every one of us and he would go wherever we were to meet us there that we might come to him. Well, the truth is that you and I could never reach heaven. We couldn't build a ladder so high. We could not live a life so pure that we were holy enough to step into the presence of a holy God. We could not reach up to God. In fact, that's the message of scripture. And so God came down to us. He entered into human flesh at the manger. God displayed his love in this way. He revealed his love in this way to the whole world that he sent his son to live among us. That's the story of Christmas. That's the love of God. But God's love didn't stop there. John goes on to say in the next verse, God's in this way, God sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. But love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. When Jesus entered this world in the manger, he came with a purpose. He didn't come to be a king. He didn't come to be a ruler. He taught, but he didn't come to be a teacher. Jesus told us, I've come that I might seek and to save those who are lost. Jesus, from the time that he entered this world, had a purpose and a plan to go to the cross where he would shed his blood and die for us that he could be an atoning sacrifice for our sin, that we could be received into his family, that we could stand then before a holy God. He offered us that incredible gift. And we share gifts at Christmas, but no gift will ever compare to that first Christmas offering 
that gift from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of the universe that He offered you and I. He offered us His one and only Son, Jesus. And He said, if you'll believe, and if you'll receive Him, you'll have eternal life. You'll be adopted into my family, and you'll become my child. It is only through Jesus Christ, whom we celebrate His birth this Sunday, this week, it is only through His love that we have hope of eternity. So I pray that this week you would settle in to that celebration of God's love. What I mean by that is, is, is listen to it, think about it, pray about it, dwell on it. The fact that Christmas isn't about just trees and Santa Claus and presents and movies and time off. Christmas is about the love of God God's Son whom He sent to you because He loves you so much that you could have everlasting life. I pray that God blesses you during this Christmas season. Celebrate Jesus every day that you can. Certainly, if you can join us on Saturday evening, Sunday morning, come celebrate with us, and we'll see what God does in our lives as we receive and celebrate His love. Thank you, and you have a great Christmas season.